Looking for a password manager? NordPass safely stores all your passwords and helps you generate new ones. The autofill feature saves you time when logging in and synchronizes across all your devices. Visit nordpass.com forward slash legendvd to get the best offer or use code legendvd at checkout to get an additional month for free. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a mono green elf deck featuring a couple new cards from Streets of New Capenna and one of the centerpieces of the deck, one of the payoffs for playing all these elves is Elvish Warmaster, 2 mana 2-2 two, two creature, saying whenever one or more other elves enter the battlefield under your control, create a 1-1 one, one green elf warrior creature token, only triggers once each turn. And for 7 mana, elves we control get plus 2 plus 2 and gain death touch until end of turn. So this is our big overrun finisher effect, which can help us close out games and maybe trade up for larger creatures as well. So the Warmaster we can activate pretty easily once we get a copy of Circle of Dreams Druid in play, which taps adding green to our mana pool for each creature we control. And all those elf tokens from a Warmaster, of course, a great way to enable our Circle of Dreams Druid. Another mana generator is Canopy Tactician, which also pumps all other elves, giving them plus one plus one, and taps to add triple green. And then we also have a Aspera Sentinel at one mana, a 1-2 with reach, can tap alongside another untapped creature we control to add one mana of any color. So those are all the ramp creatures. In terms of kind of interaction, ways to stay alive against aggressive creature decks, we have the Juru Blind Blade, a 1-1 one, one Death Touch, which is pretty good at holding off some large attackers from the opponent. Also still triggers our various creatures like Warmaster and Gala Greeters, which is one of the new additions from Streets of New Capenna. Can also make a treasure token as another way of kind of ramping whenever a creature enters the battlefield under our control. And we can often trigger the Greeters multiple times in the same turn, thanks to all these tokens that are being generated. So we can also gain some life or put plus one counters on it. And then all the two drops also excellent to tap alongside Sentinels, so we can often double spell on turn two already. And then we also have Blizzard Brawl alongside 19 snow-covered forests, so we can fight an opposing creature, making our creature indestructible in the process if we control three or more snow basics. And then Tujur Paragon kind of rounds out our two drops, also a way to maybe provide a bit of card advantage if we kick it, finding another elf among the top six cards of our library. And another great card draw engine in the deck is a Realmwalker, which lets us play elves off the top of our deck if we name elf when it enters the battlefield. It's a changeling, so also counts as an elf, which we can play off the top and enable our various elf synergies. And with the extra mana from cards like Circle of Dreams Druid, we can often combo off and play a whole bunch of elves in the same turn. And then the other big card draw engine in the deck is Vivian on the Hunt, which can use all its abilities in this deck quite nicely. We can minus one just making a 4-4 Rhino token if we need a bit of a board presence right away. We can plus two to level up one of the creatures in play by finding another creature that's one more expensive. So that's a way to find some of our key elves. Can maybe sacrifice a token, get a one drop and kind of work our way up the chain. And then the plus one is probably the most useful ability in this deck, milling five cards and then putting any number of creature cards milled this way into our hand. And the reason why that's so good, of course, is that we have a very high creature count in our deck with a total of 30 creatures, so that's half of our deck, which means we're quite likely to find two or three creatures with the plus one ability, which is a great way to kind of keep adding more creatures to the board, enabling more synergies, and of course excellent if we're facing a more controlling deck that has access to a bunch of sweepers, which can otherwise be quite problematic. And then another a nice new addition from Streets of New Capenna is Ginny Fey, which we can cast in a mono green deck, thanks to the hybrid mana cost, a 3-3 turning any of our tokens into either a 2-2 cat token with haste, or a 3-1 a dog token with vigilance. This is totally optional, so we can still decide to keep the original tokens if we would rather have a 1-1 elf token from our Warmaster or maybe a treasure token from Gala Greeters, but those can potentially be upgraded into cats or dogs, which can also add up to quite a bit of board presence out of nowhere. And then our mana base includes four copies of Lair of the Hydra as another nice creature land to apply pressure against control decks. Of course, our 19 snow covered forests and one Boseju, which can also come in handy against enchantment decks. So, yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable draw. Got a Blind Blade to play defense, and then Warmaster starts generating tokens. Do need some more mana to eventually get up to 6 for Vivian, but if we draw one of our ramp creatures that could also help, and Sentinel does exactly that. For now, still go for Warmaster first, and then next turn with a land can play Jenny Fey, which can make a cat or a dog. As our opponents on Mono White aggro with turn to adversary. Alright, there's our land. 
could also play Sentinel and Paragon, although I would prefer kicking Paragon. So at that point we'll go with Ginny Fey instead. And then Hasty Cat versus Vigilant Dog, kind of like the dog here. And then not really interested in trading for Adversary. Next turn I can play Sentinel, and that sets up a kicked Paragon, which can find more action. So I'm probably not going to play 2 mana 3-2. Opponent with an Archon of Emiria, okay. Could be a little bit annoying. Luckily have a lot of basics in our deck. And yeah, for now just play Sentinel, stick to the plan. And make another dog which can attack past Archon. And send in just a dog, I believe. Unless we also want to attack with Blight Blade, but that doesn't seem necessary. Opponent takes three. Once we get to seven mana, we can also just activate Warmaster. Does not pump our dogs, so that's a little bit of a nombo with Ginny Fey. Okay, Protector Shields means now their Archon can block a dog and survive. So, don't have any amazing attacks. But we're just able to play Vivian here, which seems pretty strong. And then we can either plus one to find more creatures, or maybe plus two. And then we could get a second War Master, perhaps, to start making more 1-1s. One and then next turn we can maybe find some more creatures and actually cast them as well. And then we can make another dog, perhaps. Or we can decline, which will make an elf, and then the second War Master will trigger as well. And then we can make a dog. And no attacks. Fabian increasing in loyalty. Next turn we can maybe dig for additional creatures with the plus one. Or we can maybe search up something like a Circle of Dreams Druid if we sacrifice a two drop so we can generate a ton of mana to activate Warmaster. Although a Canopy Tactician looks good as well here. So a lot of options. Let us... Let's see if we play Canopy Tactician, trigger double Warmaster. Pump our team. And then, yeah, our opponent has seen enough. They might have been holding on to something like Wandering Emperor. But we can pretty easily play around that. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Got our early Sentinel to make a bit of extra mana alongside Blight Blade. So we can play our three drops and then... Dreams Druid to generate mana, Realm Walker to provide card advantage, and yeah, Warmaster turn two. Kind of ideal here, as we can curve Warmaster into Blind Blade, trigger Warmaster. Although Blizzard Brawl to take out Delver of Secrets could also be worthwhile. Turn two, Suspicious Stowaway, also something worth taking out. So. Yeah, close call here, whether we want to go Warmaster plus now maybe another Sentinel. Or if we want to Blizzard Brawl and take out Stowaway before they can start drawing extra cards. I think generating extra mana and extra creatures here is still worth it. And then uh, can maybe put this Blizzard Brawl to use next turn. Opponent appears to be mono blue, so can expect some counter spells. Which also lets them transform Stowaway if they pass a turn. So we're going to want to try and double spell. And that's also where having extra mana comes in handy. Ascendant Spirits can be quite scary if they level it up. So yeah, opponent has multiple threats we have to deal with. Now Spirit and Stowaway kind of the main targets for this Blizzard Brawl. So we definitely want to play a creature to trigger Warmaster this turn. Could just go for Circle of Dreams Druid, which is great if it resolves. And then we could still technically Blizzard Brawl. So I think that's the highest upside play here.
And then once we have the mana from Circle of Dreams, the Realm Walker also becomes much more impressive. Alright, so opponents with two untapped mana means they can just level up Ascendant Spirit. So we could just play Blight Blade instead, or we can Blizzard Brawl take out Stowaway. Given that the Stowaway didn't transform, it's not a huge threat at the moment, so I'm kind of into just playing a Blight Blade. And then, uh, for now, we can hang on to Blizzard Brawl and maybe play next turn. And Blight Blade with Death Touch also means we can maybe take out a larger Ascendant Spirit. Maybe they sink a bunch of mana into it, although still only a single snow-covered forest. So pretty far from an indestructible creature with Blizzard Brawl. Still way attacks, gets to loot. Opponents didn't draw a ton of spells here since the Delver hasn't transformed yet. So drawing into lands and creatures, discards an island, plays another, and now still way transforms. But the damage has been done as we have a Circle of Dreams Druids, and we could just activate Warmaster here if we'd like and apply a ton of pressure. Which does sound quite appealing. So let's see, we have seven creatures in play, so Circle by itself activates Warmaster, and then I could still play a Realm Walker maybe alongside it. Which would also trigger Warmaster. Although they might have a counter spell here, we'll see. That resolved. Ginny Fae on top. So let's see if I tap Circle. That's 9 mana. So we can play Ginny Fae and then still activate War Master thanks to Sentinel. Gala Greeters on top. Yeah, I guess we can wait a turn on activating War Master. That's fine by me. Just completely take over the board first. Another Circle of Dreams Druid. And yeah, that's the power of Realm Walker in this deck. Make a treasure, which turns into a cat or a dog with Ginny Fae. And our opponent scoops it up. Yeah, they didn't have much interaction. And when facing other creature decks, the elf deck can often go over the top onto the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Got early Sentinel. And now even a Gala Greeter, so next turn we can play Greeters into Blind Blade. And maybe make a treasure. And we've got Realm Walker for card advantage. Thalia, not a huge problem, since we're mostly just creatures. So we'll make a treasure. And then hopefully put this Realm Walker to good use. We've got a Blizzard Brawl in case our opponent removes Realm Walker. With like a Brutal Cathar, although Skyclave. We'll exile our creature for good. But deals with the Gala Greeters. Okay, Vivian's a little expensive now. I guess we'll start with Realm Walker, see what's on top. And then we can decide if we want a Blizzard Brawl using our treasure. Another Vivian on top, so now I'm more incentivized to maybe take out Thalia. And... Uh, yeah, can do so with an indestructible blind blade, so it can attack for two as well. Sure, seems fine. Also, keeping blind blade back on defense to block apparition also reasonable as we're probably not a deck that wants to trade damage in this matchup. Second Apparition is unfortunate, but it's gonna deal with our Realm Walker, so we'll definitely need our Vivians to eventually take over and provide more card advantage. For now, at least we can hide behind our Blind Blades, so we won't be facing too much pressure here. But uh, pretty far from 6 mana, so drawing both, not ideal. Just a hopeful initiate and a portable hole probably goes after Sentinel here. Or still going for Blind Blades to try and clear a path. Alright, another Realm Walker is nice. And another one on top. Okay. So it does mean we won't be drawing any lands. But uh, yeah, at least we'll have another Realm Walker if they deal with the second one. 
Adlin is scary, so that's a creature we might want to trade off with our Blind Blade. For now, Gala Greeters. And pass it back. Tactician would be a nice pickup next turn. Although, once again, means we're missing a land drop, so ideally we kind of see a land on top after being uh, done for the turn and playing some creatures off the top. And now Raydan also makes our Vivian ridiculously expensive, so probably won't be able to play it this game. At least we're keeping Adlin at bay, so just have to deal with Raydan getting in for some damage. And I think Tactician beats playing another Sentinel off the top. And then we can make a treasure with Gala Greeters, since we could use more mana. Eventually can also start gaining life to offset the damage from Raydan. And now Tactician also potentially generating a lot of mana to help cast Vivian. Sentinel as a 2-3 can also just block Raydan. So we'll see. If they can deal with a Blight Blade, we could be facing quite a bit of damage. Or if they take out Tactician, that could be bad. It's going to be a Wandering Emperor. Main phase to maybe minus and exile a Greeters or a Sentinel. Goes for Greeters. Opponent does not seem to like that card. And we take two. Okay. Can block the... 1-1 one, one token. Finally a land on top. So, is it time for Vivian? Or do we just play a couple of creatures first? If I do play Vivian, what's our plan? I could sacrifice... Let's say a Sentinel to get a Warmaster to start making tokens. Although Sentinel is not bad as a reach creature. 3, 6, yeah, we would have to tap everything to cast Vivian. Or we could just uh, plus to find some more creatures or minus to make a Rhino. Definitely have some options. Although now with Emperor in play, we do kind of want to start applying a bit of pressure. And getting a Warmaster might be one of the better ways to do so. Although Vivian would be in a little bit of danger. Yeah, close call. I think I do play Vivian. And then... Keep Blight Blade on defense. Sacrifice Sentinel. So get a War Master, which will be a 3-3 at least. And then we still have a Blight Blade to block Adlin. But now it could be bad if they can... Play another Wandering Emperor and Exile Canopy Tactician. Two cards left in hand, five mana. And they could also now give Adlin first strike with uh, Wandering Emperor. It's gonna be Aspirant. Is our opponent just going all in on this Raidan, perhaps? Okay. Can go after Vivian, decides to go face. They can now use Hopeful Initiate, but we don't have any artifacts or enchantments that it can destroy. So, yeah, take four. Get to untap, another War Master on top is nice. So, let's see here. Probably start by playing War Master. There's a Circle of Dreams Druid, exactly what we wanted. So we can play that, see what else is on top, another Sentinel we can play for free. And then we could also kind of use Vivian as a way to shuffle some of the cards away to maybe find more creatures. So that's also useful with a uh, copy of Realmwalker out. Now do we want to make a Rhino? Still happy drawing an extra Circle of Dreams, although just drawing a land would also be useful at this point. So, close call. Could also sacrifice, let's say, a War Master to get a second Circle of Dreams Druids. So we have even more mana next turn. Which I also don't mind. Watch 
evolution work itself. And uh, yeah, that seems better than getting a Ginny Fay. Okay, so for now I think we're staying back. But then next turn we should be able to do some damage. With Double Circle of Dreams, a ton of creatures in play. And we'll be drawing a Boseju, which could go after a Portable Hole, but more likely to just play it as a land. Show them how we greet our enemies. Spellbinder gets to have a look. So they are presenting quite a few flying creatures, so having these Sentinels with Reach is important, which is why our opponent took one of our Sentinels. And we're taking six. Yeah, I think that happens. Not gonna jump just yet. Can always sacrifice a token to get an extra sentinel. Probably want to start by playing another sentinel from hand and make a token with a war master. And then I can sack that token to get another sentinel if I'd like. So, another forest on top. Okay, play Boseju. How much mana do we have here? 22 plus 4, 26. So it means I can activate this uh, three times. Don't think that's going to be enough for lethal necessarily. Could also play Kicked Paragon and maybe see what else we find along the way. Which could be okay, too. Sure, let's give that a shot. Alright, and our opponent scoops it up, so I guess they felt like they were too far behind, especially now with all these sentinels protecting us from the flying creatures. And if not this turn, especially next turn, we should be able to set up a lethal attack onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems fine. Sentinel into Blight Blade. In a perfect world, we draw a nice 2-drop. So we can curve 2-drop into Blight Blade. Put on blue-green, so maybe a ramp deck. So we'll both be ramping, basically. It's gonna be a Liberator instead. Alright. Not exactly sure what to make of that. Can pass it back, and then next turn we could already play Tactician, which is going to generate about the same mana as a Circle of Dreams Druid Tracker, so put it with some nice kind of mid range y creatures. And typically we don't mind playing against mid range, especially if they don't have a ton of removal. Not going to use Poseidon on the clue token. Okay, so yeah, I think going for Tactician is reasonable will give us a nice bit of mana to work with for next turn, and then we can maybe provide some card advantage with either Realmwalker or Vivian. But priority is going to be to get a Circle of Dreams Druid in play as well. Take four. Could see something like an Asikas Chariot. Which would also synergize pretty well with a tracker. Hopefully no removal on Tactician. Although if they had any... They probably would have used it to attack with Liberator. Eh, never mind, Inscription gonna fight, so I guess that makes sense. Picked up Ginny Fay. Yeah, I think I still want to generate more mana here with uh, Circle of Dreams. Don't quite have enough mana to double spell. Opponent can sack the clue token end of turn. We're just gonna hang back. And then next turn, hopefully, we get to make 
at least two plays. It's going to be another tracker. Well, hopefully no more fight spells. But it looks like they have another one. Decisive Denial. Okay. So yeah, opponent's doing a good job of killing off our big mana creatures. Liberator attacks. Could trade off for Blight Blade. Or we can keep it to trade for Tracker, which is probably better. Warmaster's not bad. So now we can double spell Warmaster into Galagreeters. Which is especially nice as we'll get to make a 1-1. One -one which also triggers Gala Greeters and keep Blind Blade on defense. And then I think Treasure for now. Pass back. And next turn with Elaine, I could maybe play Vivian. Although going off with Realmwalker and Jinifei is also reasonable. Especially with Warmaster and Gala Greeters both turning the various tokens into cats and dogs. Alright, third fight spell takes out Warmaster. That's too bad. But now we can trade a 1 1 for Tracker, and I'll just take two. Alright, it's gonna be a safekeeping, giving it indestructible. That's fine. Opponent is down to one card, but they can still sack a clue token. But yeah, we're relatively stable, and hopefully our opponent doesn't have any crazy bombs in the late game, so we can start taking over with our elves. So, how do we want to start? Probably Realmwalker. Kind of stabilize the board first before playing Vivian. And maybe find some elves off the top. And then first probably go for a plus one counter. So when I play Jenny, I can make a treasure and turn it into a dog. Although Paragon on top is also tempting, I think I still prefer Jinifei. And we can tap maybe Gala Greeters. Could also decline to make a dog and just make a treasure, so I still have guaranteed 6 mana for Vivian next turn. Although we can just play Kicked Paragon. So I think making a dog token is fine. And then gain some life as well. The dog token does come into play tapped because the treasure comes into play tapped from Gala Greeters. So that's a little different from turning a 1 1 elf into a cat or a dog. Okay, invoke the ancients. Still pretty powerful here. So, you gotta hope that's their big curve topper and their curve doesn't go any higher. Tracker attacks can trade for. A Blind Blade, maybe. Another Ginny Fay on top. So playing a Kicked Paragon. Maybe shuffle some cards away here so we can find... more lands and other elves we can play. And uh don't think Realmwalker is getting in the red zone. And then I can make a treasure, which turns into probably another dog. And some goodies on top. Do we want another Warmaster or Circle of Dreams Druid? Even a Blind Blade to trade for a Spirit is not bad here. The card that's gonna win us the game is Warmaster, although we're kind of struggling with how much mana we have, so I also don't mind the Circle of Dreams Druid. Although we could just make the argument for getting the cheapest creature, so we can keep comboing with Realmwalker. And then uh, make another dog. And gain some life, I think. Pass it back. Happy to double block one of the spirits. Got a land coming up, so we can play Vivian next turn. So let's double block Dog and Paragon. And then take 4 plus 1 point of Trample. They might have another combo trick, they don't. And an old growth troll. Okay. 
So is it time for Vivian, or do we take a different approach? I think Vivian's fine, and then we could just make a Rhino for now, which triggers Gallag Reaters, and then we can uh, potentially make another cat or dog. It's all about generating a board presence now. Stand in our way. I, dare you. I did not mean to turn the rhino into a dog, so that was a slight misclick. That's fine. Make a treasure now, and that one we definitely want to turn into a dog. Pulse one counter seems fine. Alright, pass it back. So this dog should have been a 4-4, which is a bit better than a 3-1 Vigilance, but I think we'll be able to deal with it here. Pack leader. Opponent passes, so can keep comboing thanks to a Realm Walker. Gala Greeters make a treasure. Always happy to make more dogs. And then we can keep playing Creatures of the Top until we hit a land, at which point we activate Vivian and we can maybe still keep playing more creatures. I wouldn't mind getting either a War Master or a Circle of Dreams Druid, but our opponent scoops it up before we even get a chance to activate Vivian. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems okay. Missing some early plays, but we have some powerful curve toppers here and ways to generate a lot of mana too. Up against a Naya deck. So turn three, probably leaning towards Circle of Dreams Druid. Not sure what deck our opponent's playing, it looks like a Naya Enchantment's deck. So we might end up using Buseju to blow up an enchantment. Blind Blade also nice to have access to as a Death Touch blocker. Alright. So don't expect a ton of removal from the opponent's deck necessarily. But they can certainly go over the top and combo us off with the various runes, rune first champion, and uh, yeah, there we have it, turn three. Our deck doesn't have a ton of removal, but we're gonna need it. Blizzard Brawl would be quite effective alongside Blight Blade as well. For now, we can play Tactician. And Blind Blade, or Blind Blade into Tactician. Sequencing doesn't matter too much. So Blind Blade can hold off any large attackers. There's a Naturalist, so yeah, opponents with Champion plus Naturalist means they can cast their runes for free. And Visitor providing extra counters, so this does not bode well for us. We'll see how many more runes they have. And then they could easily refuel with a showdown of the Scalds. We'll trade for Champion, although I'm sure they have more copies in hand. Or maybe a time of safekeeping for Indestructible, fair enough. Okay. So where do we start? Can play Vivian. And then probably want to plus one, see which creatures we find. Hang on to Boseju. Okay, found a couple creatures here, which is nice. So I can play Sentinel and Blind Blade before tapping Circle of Dreams Druid. 
question is whether I want to use Buseju or if we go down a different path. Because I could Buseju the Naturalists to kind of stop them casting runes for free. But then we also give them an extra land. So I'm not sure how useful that actually is. Maybe I just play Ginny Fey and pass. And then... I guess we could still Buseju for one mana as we now control a legendary creature. Maybe that's worth it. Get rid of the Naturalists. Before they can make use of the mana discount. Although I could also see just hanging on to Buseju. Alright, Potan gets a land. But uh, hopefully we get to untap with Vivian once again. Which is quite strong with all this extra mana. Opponent has a backup Naturalists. So they can keep playing their runes for free. And a showdown as we kind of feared. Hope it doesn't find a ton of uh, runes here. Well, they found a lot of spells and a Rune of Might for Trample. So next turn is going to hurt. For now, we'll see if they want to attack with a champion. Or if they hang back and just build up this enormous Trample creature. Okay. Start by plusing, plus one. Now what and hit have? three more creatures at least. So, all the one drops are essentially free with our Circle of Dreams. And then I might go for a kicked Paragon. Tapping Tactician. And found either Realmwalker or Warmaster, both pretty decent. And which do we prefer? Maybe Realmwalker to keep playing creatures off the top. And then tap maybe Paragon, keep as much toughness back as possible. And then play Realmwalker before tapping Circle of Dreams Druid so we can make even more mana. But sadly, no elves on top. Alright, so that did not quite pan out. Might have been better off with a Warmaster, but we'll see if we manage to survive the incoming attack. Opponent's going to be able to generate a ton of plus one counters. But we do have quite a bit of toughness back, including Death Touch, to discourage any attacks. And once the showdown goes away. If we still have a Vivian and Realmwalker standing, we might be able to take over, but it's hard to say for sure. Especially the combination of Realmwalker and Vivian to kind of shuffle away the top card if it's a land is incredibly useful. Eventually we'll have to find another Warmaster to pump the team, otherwise it's going to be difficult to attack profitably. Another Naturalists. Well, the hope is that they don't have another showdown. Two cards left in hand. They could still play their runes for free. It's gonna be a Reign of Truth. Ooh, that one's gonna hurt. So how many enchantments are we talking about here? Looks like six or seven. So a champion 17 power with trample goes after Vivian. So no way of saving her. But at least we can trade for a blind blade. So maybe they're better off just going face at that point. And yep, that's what they realize. Well, how many creatures am I willing to sacrifice here? Probably just a blind blade. And then. I somehow need to kill my opponent next turn or generate enough toughness to survive, which seems unlikely. 
I do have a reach creature to block their cave at least. But they just have so much power of trample that it's going to be hard, but I think this is still our best shot. So we're down to three. Jenny Fay on top, not super useful. So what's our plan here? I could sacrifice a Sentinel to get Warmaster and get that going, as we'll have quite a bit of mana to activate it. Do I want to tap Sentinel first? I don't think so. Or we can just plus one and then hope that there's a Warmaster among the top cards of our deck. But that's no guarantee. I think we go for the uh, plus two here. Get a Warmaster. Circle of Dreams on top. It's a good start. Sentinel. All right. So we're stringing together some creatures. And uh, might need more toughness from the cat token. Although at this point, just making elf tokens is probably better. As those also get pumped by Tactician and uh, Warmaster. Galag Reaters. Okay, so how much mana do we have? This taps for 13. So if I play my land, I can activate Warmaster twice. Is that enough for lethal? I doubt it. But uh, let's see. If I go to combats. And yeah, we don't have a ton of attackers. What happens if we just pass and stay back and then activate Warmaster on defense? Is that better? Possibly. Because we don't have any trample creatures. So it should be pretty easy for the opponent to survive the attack. And then if we don't have Warmaster back on defense to pump, it seems impossible to survive. So I don't think I'm in a position to attack. So yeah, I guess we'll just pass and then... Hope to make a big play next turn if we're still alive. Bottom pumps naturalists. And another showdown, not what we wanted to see at all. Finds a Circle of Confinement, which can also go after our Warmaster. So yeah, that's going to make it incredibly difficult. They can give the fresh Kami haste with a Rune of Speed. So if they play Circle of Confinement, targeting Warmaster, we'll have to decide how many times to pump the team if we want to tap the Tacticians or keep them back as extra blockers. As our opponent plays more and more enchantments here. Well, both decks kind of got to do their thing. All right, so let's see what they take out here. I imagine it's Warmaster, but maybe they're tempted by the Realm Walker. No, goes for Ginny Fey, I guess, to just take out as much toughness as possible. So I think we let that happen, so we can also block with the Circle of Dreams Druid instead of tapping it for mana right now. Opponent's going to swing with a team, I'm sure. And then we could realistically let the two visitors hit us down to one. And then we have to block every other point of damage. So how many times can we um, pump is a question. So we have our uh, Circle of Dreams Druids plus Sentinel. That's two activations. So I think we're going to be one activation short here of doing it uh, three times. So that means plus four plus four to the team. 
I guess let's block first, pretending we can kill the visitors. Then we want to take out naturalists. So this is going to be seven toughness. Tacticians are likely dying, so that's also going to shrink down our team, which we have to keep in mind. So I guess a creature we don't want to lose probably is the Realm Walker, so let's put that in front of Visitor. And then... Double block, double block. Double block, double block. See, seven plus eight. That would be enough. So... Not entirely sure these are the optimal blocks, but it's going to be difficult to figure those out in the uh, a lot of time, so we'll try this. Given more time to set up our blocks here, I probably would have tried to pair up some of our more valuable creatures when double blocking. That way, once we pump our creatures, the opponent can only take one of them out at most, as opposed to being able to kind of take out all our key creatures and having a bunch of random elf tokens left over. Alright, I guess our opponent either disconnected or gave up. So we should have been able to survive this attack after pumping our team multiple times with our Warmaster. And yeah, then there's a decent chance we could actually take over. It's a bit of an unexpected end to this game, but I'll take it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Double Warmaster plus Ginny Fay could be exciting. Bit of removal with Blizzard Brawl. Just missing some accelerants. Up against the red-whites. Let's get this lair in play, even though Blizzard Brawl wants us to have more snow lands. Opponent off to a slow start. So maybe more likely to be a mid-range or control deck as opposed to an aggro deck. Or they just got unlucky and drew all the sundown passes. Alright, Brutal Cathar going after Warmaster. So... We could Blizzard Brawl, but it would be a trade, so I think just going Ginny Fae is better. And then next turn I could double spell Warmaster Paragon, or we can fight to Cathar. Opponent's playing green as well, so just more of a human deck. That makes sense. Cathar stays back. Alright, that's our third Snowland, so we can take out Sigarda if we'd like. Or we can get our Warmaster back, which is also tempting. Play Warmaster, fights with Genife on Cathar, so it can also attack past Sigarda. And Sigarda is not super scary if the opponent doesn't have a ton of other creatures in play. And then we can also play a Blight Blade if we'd like. Which will then trigger all the Warmasters, which also work with Genife. So for now. I guess we'll make some uh, Vigilant Dogs. And attack for four. So not a bad turn. It's a lot of power and toughness out of nowhere. Kumano. Puts us to 19 and an Adlin. Which also gets pumped by Sigarda. And do we want to trade for the token? We probably do. Just trade a dog. Alrighty. So I could go for a kick Paragon, or we can play Tactician, which then gives us the mana to maybe activate a Warmaster next turn. And I might be better off just making Elf tokens at this point, since they get pumped by Warmaster and Tactician. And we're probably not attacking past Adeline here unless we go for hasty cats. Is that worth it? Make two cats, attack with a team, opponent can eat a Warmaster. And then take seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I guess actually making two cats is probably fine here. Attack with all. And then we should have them next turn. Opponent falls to one. I guess they couldn't even block Warmaster, otherwise they would have been dead. So I had to block Ginny Fay. Even better. 
And at 15, don't see your opponent killing us. So yeah, Jenny Fay plus Warmaster, pretty sweet combo. This is 14, so probably want to block so we don't get killed by another Kumano. And that should do it. Can play another creature to make a couple more uh, hasty cats with Jinifei if we'd like, but opponent seems very dead. Awesome. Well, we got to see our mono green elf deck in action here. And as long as we can dodge sweeper heavy decks, the deck seems pretty decent. And uh, yeah, has a nice mix of card advantage with Realm Walker and Vivian, which is one of the exciting new additions. And then we still have a little bit of interaction thanks to Blizzard Brawl, so we can keep up against some more aggressive creature decks, take out cards like Brutal Cathar, like we saw in this last game. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.